Hi, okay, so I'm joined by uh, Steve Purden, the Chief Executive of the online music service We7. Um, Steve, you're announcing some changes to the service today. Could you tell me what's happening and why? Yes, I mean, basically, um, we when we first launched We7, we thought the idea of on-demand music was the ultimate music service. Uh, interesting enough, our consumers have actually showed us a slightly different way. Uh, so uh, this week we're launching Internet Radio Plus, uh, which actually repositions We7 uh, as an entry point uh, where you start with radio rather than on-demand. Well, you, you're clearly going to be de-emphasizing, perhaps is the right word, the, ability, the current ability of uh, users to select the track they want to play uh, in favor of the, the sort of non-on-demand uh, personalized radio. Will, will the on-demand disappear? No, no, the, it's not the intention for it to disappear. It's just the realization. We introduced radio in January of, uh, of this year. Uh, just as a, 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 a function, uh, which we gave it no focus, but in less than nine months, uh, over 55% of the streams on a monthly basis uh, are now no longer on demand. And it's just that our users are saying, I love the idea, but actually I can't be bothered. Just entertain me. Just let me turn on a button. And the way it's going to work is it'll be radio with on demand, or rather in the radio parlance, it'll be radio with, Requests so at any time you'll be able to request a song to be added. You can still get access to the full capabilities that we seven have at the moment. So it's more recognizing how the mass market, the majority of our consumers, uh, want to consume the music in a entertain me way. It's interesting to hear that people um, actually prefer not to pick the songs they play. I mean, maybe there's a problem around in the, in the sector with, uh, with discovery and introducing new material to, to people. You know, clearly Spotify has the radio feature, but is most regarded as a place where you can go and pick and play anything, anything you want. Was it, was it a surprise to you that, that realization? It was very much a surprise. And, you know, as I said at the beginning, I thought that the, the ultimate music service was one which you can choose, but Actually, it's, when you think about it, it's human nature. People say, all oh, right, I want to play David Bowie, and then I want to play Kings of Leon, and then I want to do something else. And it's, but they still want to be listening to music. That's why you know, radio, is, in its traditional form, is one of the most popular ways of consuming music. It's this situation that the Internet um, allows us to do lots of things. So constantly choosing the songs that you want actually becomes a negative. So that's why we're... We, you know, and we were surprised, as I say, we were surprised at how quickly people have chosen themselves to go to a non-on-demand mode. And so the, the feature is there on the website now, the radio feature. Are you going to have to alter some of your other products, like the mobile apps you introduced recently? Well, the mobile apps themselves are clearly uh, on-demand subscription. And that, you know, if somebody's paying £5 and £10, uh, then the way they can control the I want to be entertained is by the creation of their own playlists, and they are paying for the right to choose when and what, how and what they want to want to listen to. But yes, we are looking at the impact that this has in terms of the the mobile side because it's you know again if it's the vast majority of people want to be entertained and they don't want to go through that process of building their playlists or choosing the editorial playlists that uh, our uh, music team put together, then how do we make it easy for the vast majority of people? And so. Is the radio service a free service, a paid service, a mixture of both? Does it have ads? Yeah, the radio service, or the you know the radio plus service from We Seven will be exactly the same as the on demand. You know, the vast majority of it will be ad funded. It will be free. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, that, that's the type of thing that we're delivering. Now, it's it's not something that we can do overnight. So we're going to have a series of um, deliveries, platform deliveries over the next six months, starting with what's there today, which is really user interface shift, you know, the ability to come in and the entry point now is much simpler. You know, tell us the artist, tell us a song, tell us an album, tell us a genre and we'll play that for you. But any time you can make a request or even go to the, the you know, we, we seven classical form as, as you, you might have used before. I guess truth is this pushing the radio service or radio plus service over the on demand is, is going to work out cheaper for you, isn't it? Because if I, if I remember correctly, the, the PRS license for on demand 
playback is a, is a lot more expensive than uh, radio, effectively. Yeah, it's about three times the cost to do a on-demand song compared to doing a, a radio song. And that's why this is brilliant, because if we try to go this way and actually enforce it on our users, then I think we would have got a uh, sharp ship, you know, sharp, sh- short, sharp strip in, in that way. Uh, but they are saying this is the way we prefer. So it's cr- really nice, actually, when a consumer... Uh, demand and a business need comes together. So it will make the economics uh, easier for us, without doubt. Although it's not 100% true, because the more radio songs that are played, we will have to shift the type of advertising and mechanisms that we use from that point of view. Uh, if you're not interacting, then the advertising doesn't beca- isn't as premium as it would be if you were. So I guess you're moving away from the on-demand um, model a little bit, um, which is a model that Obviously, Spotify is playing in quite hard at the moment. Um, yeah. Is did that inform your decision? Well, yeah, you have to look at everything that's going on, and if you look at the consumers, they, that was one uh, facet within this. Obviously, you look at say library replacement and iTunes uh, replacement models like Spotify. Um, we said was playing very uh, aggressively in that space. We also look globally, and you look at say Pandora in the US, which only does. Uh, you know, enter an artist or enter a genre, and we will play a radio station based upon that. Uh, those two different uh, deliveries and the information that provides actually says the vast majority of people, the mass market, prefer an easy way of life, a simple way of mechanism. Uh, and that's why we came up with the three things of simple, portable, and personal. Uh, and that's, you know, I'm trying to make a move into that, that, those three environments is quite difficult. And in advertising, which is very much where we, we sit, the mass markets really are the, the main customer for us. So it's not the guy who wants to uh, you know, effectively replace his library system of CDs or downloads, which really is what on-demand is more w- w- about. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it fits, actually. There's a lot of data which allows us to move this way. Um, but you're moving into a direction that you mentioned Pandora and... Last FM, dis- although it itself moved away from on demand uh, about a year ago, um, still plays in the radio space, the, the, the personalized radio, quite hard. Are you, are you just moving into a space that's already occupied by them? It's, it's occupied by some good people. I mean, Pandora, is, is, you know, the, most of the people in the UK won't know no. about Pond- Pandora, but definitely it's <laughs> one of the best services on a global basis. Uh, Last FM and Pandora have actually been the pioneers in what's been happening in radio on the internet and uh, again I think if you look at the radio world there are lots of different radio stations Uh, I think in the in the world of the UK there's definitely room for great companies like Last FM and We7 to coexist because they're again a different user base you know Last FM no on demand and actually very much tuned to the social network heavy uh, computer literate person We7 is my mum and my daughter uh, who love to be able to just play uh, something you know, in their environment and don't really care about the social stuff and the, the techie bits around it. And you have um, your own radio background, don't you? If you could remind me of, of that and, and whether that you know, informs this move and whether we'll see you spinning the wheels of steel. No, I mean, unfortunately, I have no radio background. I have a mobile DJ, Desmond Double Dex type of uh, background in my in my youth. But uh, <coughs> you, you never know. You might get the Steve and Clive show coming from We7 at some time. But uh, maybe Robert and Steve we can do. <laughs> I don't know about that. But <laughs> how is We7 more generally? Um, you know, you issued a, a statement a few months ago saying that you're now making um, free music pay with ads. What's the state of the economics in the space at the moment? Without a doubt, I mean, I've always been very open on this. The building a music business with the uh, is a economic challenge, and the great news, as we said, that uh, yeah, our first milestone was actually being able to cover the music costs, and that continues. And things like the transition towards uh, more streams being radio based and on demand, as we've already highlighted, does does help that economic start to come through and work. So the great news is there's a lot of good indicators. Uh, you know, again, going back to Pandora for a second, you know, they, you know, they hit $50 million last year and broke even. And those type of indications of We7 hitting their, being able to cover music with uh, advertising are great stakes in the ground. 
But, you know, I've always been honest, this is a challenging business, more challenging than any of the business I've been involved with. But I think we'll get there. But like Spotify, you're not just a free music service. You have the subscription model that you introduced, I think, also this year. How's, how's that going? How many subs do you have? Uh, we actually, again, it's still in the small thousands. You know, that's, that hasn't really gone as exciting as we would love it to go. And it's quite interesting to understand why. We've done quite a lot of analysis, and it, it's, uh, it comes down to our user base. Our user base is 82, 85% uh, age gr- groupings of 13 to 30, uh, whereas you know, the people who are uh, subscribing on Android and iPhones, uh, inter- interesting enough, are males over 30. So it's not a natural fit for our, for our user base. But you know, we get a lot of uh, uh, compliments on the way the service works. And again, going back to some of the early questions, is how can we interplay... Uh, the radio functionality on ray on mobile, so it creates much more of a drive to subscription, um, which is you know really is the is the uh, where where m- music on mobile belongs. I saw some comment from someone I can't remember who recently that said you know you'd, a startup would have to be crazy to to get into the online music space, and an investor would have to be a lunatic to to invest in it. What? Peter Gabriel is amongst your investors. What what do you guys think of that? Well, I started being an investor as well with Peter, and uh, you know, I got crazy enough to want to actually run the business. Uh, yeah, it's 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 true. I mean, I've been involved with building technology businesses on a global basis uh, several times over, and to say this is very challenging, but it's also, uh, and I use the terms, it's actually irrationally seductive, um, but. The beauty about the music industry in the UK, for example, 51 million people listen to radio. You know, as they move and transition to the internet space, um, what are they going to do? Um, you know that there is a, a really significant global and local opportunity. We're talking about listens being in the in the trillions, even in a, on a, a geographical basis in the in the UK on, a, on an annual basis. The, uh, there is a great business opportunity that is there to be had. We're still, you know, <laughs> Spotify, Last FM, We Seven, uh, Pandora are still all working very, very hard to get to get that to working. But once it does start to work, then it will be a very exciting proposition for us all. There, there are a lot of entrants to the market, aren't they? In the especially in the sort of unlimited access model area, um, a lot of you seem to be racing at this early time during which Apple seems to be sort of sleeping um, and continuing to just plod along with the a la carte individual download model. What, you know, what, what do you see Apple doing if, if they flip the, the switch toward unlimited access? Is, are, all the, are, are all the startups dead in the water? No, they're not dead in the water. I mean, it's a bit like looking at, uh, you know, without a doubt, and Apple are not sleeping. There is no way that Apple are, are actually sleeping at this moment in time. I mean, if, for example, if you go to I, iTunes online, uh, you can already play most of the songs as a preview level, and they reported this week possibly going to 90-second uh, previews. So for that to already happen, says they've already got uh, a cloud-based access model operational, otherwise that itself couldn't be delivered. Um, I think, you know, if I was writing their product roadmap, I would go through two phases. Uh, one is to actually introduce the digital locker mechanism so everything you pay for is available anywhere. Uh, and I think it's probably more of a licensing thing that, that hasn't been launched as yet. And then eventually, and you might pay $20, $30 a year for that. But think about it. Once you can access all the things you pay for, it's a very easy step up to say, well, actually, you can access all of the music that we have for instead of $20, $30 a year for, say, $15, $20 a month. So they are, you know, you might say they're sleeping. They're a classic sleeping giant. They will wake up. They will take the subscription position very, very strongly. But again, you know, if you look at the opportunities that are there, what about the people who won't pay for subscription? What about the people who uh, are listening to it at work rather than at, uh, at home. What, and there's all sorts of opportunities that, that will allow businesses like We7 to grow. All right. Interesting stuff. Thanks a lot for your time. Good. Good to see you again, as always. Yeah.